How's it going everyone? It's Sam. Tom Lee just a few days ago talked about the sell-off in the market and now today we're seeing a bit of a green day. Still seeing some fear and some weakness in certain tech stocks but what he said was completely correct so far and it looks like he's going to continue to be correct time after time buying the dips. Now he talks about where the market's at right now whether this is a cause for concern what the Fed's going to do whether that's going to be good that they're cutting rates. He talks about whether he's buying the dip and also a couple other things. I want to tell you about a stock too that I've been looking at buying here today. It seems juicy and it's one that you've definitely heard of. But let me play the Tom Lee clip first so you can see like his warning why he's saying that investors want to de-risk, why he is on the other side of the trade. If you don't mind, hit subscribe so you can see future videos just like this. Also, if you want to trade crypto, there's a link to Marjex underneath that video. We're moving up to 57,000 on Bitcoin. Really nice to see. If you want to trade this market, like I said, there is that link. They're doing a big Casper airdrop too. And uh, you can actually see the KRC20 mainnet launch is September 15. So not that far away. Casper is doing quite well right now on this little jump. And if you want some free tokens, you can get it over on Marjax. Now, let me play this clip for you from Tom Lee. Well, it's been a rough week. I mean, this September first four days were down 4%. It's actually one of the fifth worst September since 1928. So it's pretty bad. Um, I don't think there's actually a lot of fundamental arguments for why stocks are down this much. But I think we've pulled forward to seasonality. This September to November period last year was really tough. Historically, it's tough. And I, I wonder if Markets are going risk off early. So you believe in the soft landing story. You said there's no fundamental reason for this. This is a debate over soft landing versus something worse. Market seems to be tilting towards something worse. You say no. Yeah, the reason I, I don't think it's something worse and, you know, we don't know is that the jobs added was better than July. Remember, July was the hard landing fears because it was such a weak number. And in fact, the number of industries adding jobs jumped to 53%. That's the best in six months. And the unemployment rate fell. So I think we're at a point where the Fed could engineer a soft landing. And that's why two weeks from now, it's going to be important. 50, 25, does it matter to you? I, I think it's going to be how the market interprets either number because, you know, there can be such thing as a, a dovish 50 or a hawkish 50 or a, a panicked 50, um, even a hawkish 25. So I think the reality is the Fed is on a cutting cycle. That's really a, a good catalyst for rotation. Interest rates are going to fall and it's going to help industries like housing, autos, credit cards come out of this recession. So I, I think it's good news when they start cutting. OK, what's happening in tech? Uh, we said that the NASDAQ's down more than 5% this week. We're having the worst week in about 18 months, and the tech sector itself is off more than 7 on the week. What's going on with that trade? Uh, I mean, tech, I think, revealed its hand last week because NVIDIA had a good number, but it fell. So when stocks fall on good news, you know it's either a crowded trade or something bad could be coming. And then, of course, they've led the downside this week. I, I think it is part of this pull forward the seasonality because people want to de-risk and tech is a big holding. But I think on the margin, there could also be a political aspect to this. You know, Trump's probability of winning actually increased this week in the betting markets and in the polls. And I know investors think he'll be tough on China, which would be bad for semi. So I think part of this could be fears that a Trump gaining is, is bad for semis. What, what if there's just too much priced into these stocks at this point? Valuations have gotten a little too rich, even if they're the greatest stocks in the world, which you've made the argument that, in fact, they are, that this is the place you want to be, maybe more than any other. And what if that's true and the multiples still don't don't make sense? Um, it, I, I think it's possible. Uh, you know, in a, NVIDIA's last 10 years of history, uh, there have been 30 percent drawdowns almost eight times of similar magnitude. Uh, it's P.E. NVIDIA's Ford P.E. was actually higher at the bottom of those drawdowns. You know, right now, NVIDIA's Ford P is in the mid-20s. So to me, this looks like a normal profit taking. Maybe it takes NVIDIA down to the 90s, but I think two years from now, that's really going to be a gift. So when you look at all of these, are you a buyer on the dip? Are you urging people who read your research and listen to you here and elsewhere to do that? Uh, we're close to that point because let's say we thought that there would be a 7 to 10%, the risk of a 7 to 10% drawdown between now and November, 
we're almost down 5% now. I think we're next week we could be within that point of where we pulled for that entire correction into the month of September. So I think we're close to the point where, I mean, I wouldn't be a seller here. And I think the lower range of the S&P's 5,400, 5,350, we're almost there now. You think the move from August 5th to, let's say, September 5th um, was justified? Was it, was it too much? Was it built on reality? What, what do you think? Uh, it's hard to know. I, I know that there was panic that caused that three-day drawdown and the VIX spiked to 66. So we know that there was panic. But we also know there was a ton of cash on the sidelines already into August that was put to work. And I think part of this was a liquidity move because we know the yen was highly correlated with that move. And, and it's kind of happening again. The yen's turned strong and it's been putting pressure on stocks. Now, he said a couple interesting things there. He thinks, and this is exactly what I've said too, that depending on how the Fed frames this rate cut and the rate cutting cycle, it could drastically change how people view the market. Now, this is for the stock market as well as the crypto market. A lot of it has to do with sentiment and what people think is going to happen moving forward, what the Fed's seeing, uh, how aggressively they'll cut, etc. He also said that they are very close to buying the dip. He thinks that NVIDIA in the 90s is a steal. It's a gift. And there's one stock that I'm watching today, Google. Google has been in this antitrust lawsuit uh, looking at maybe not being able to be the default search engine for the iPhone, which honestly, that would give them, what, $20 billion in cash flow back each year. And people prefer Google anyway, so I don't think that they're, that uh, people would choose anything but Google for the most part anyways. But yeah, Google is down significantly from the high of $194, $193, down to $150. That's nearly a 25% drop. This puts it at a Ford PE of 17.4. And this is one of the most profitable, fastest growing companies that has a large market share, has a dominant position, has been buying shares back, is just starting to pay dividends in the market. So uh, I have been buying this for years, but I'm looking at maybe clearing up some of my index VOO position to go buy some more Google. Of course, some people will say, don't do that. There's this big antitrust lawsuit. They could be broken up, all this kind of stuff. But usually, I think buying good companies when there's fear and when they have taken a significant dip, I usually feel like that's a pretty good thing to do. And Google is probably worth more even if it got broken up than it is worth together. Oftentimes, companies get a bit of a discount if that's the case. Now, I realize we're not talking about crypto quite as much, but everything is tied together these days, right? Bitcoin's up because the general market is up and people just feel more comfortable about the market this week than last week. We do have some big CPI and PPI numbers later this week. We have the Fed talking next week. So be on the lookout for all that. Let me know your thoughts. I'll have probably another crypto video for you later tonight. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.